Today's scripture passage comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 30. And it's a pretty familiar one. It's Jesus' teaching. And so Jesus says, Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to the first one, two bags of silver to another, and one he gave one bag of silver, dividing it proportional among their abilities. And then he left on his trip. Now, the servant who received five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant who had two bags of silver also worked hard and earned two more. But the servant who received one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. Now, after a long time, the master returned from his trip, and he called them to give an account of how they had used the money. The servant who had, whom he had entrusted five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I've earned you five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling a small amount. Now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. See the pattern? Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops where you didn't plant, gathering crops where you didn't cultivate, and I was afraid to lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look here, here is your money back. The master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew that I harvested crops where I didn't plant and I didn't and, and cultivate, why do you then deposit my money? Why didn't you deposit my money back in the bank? At least it could have gotten interest there. And then he ordered to take the money from this servant and give him to the one, give it to the one who had ten bags. Those of us who use well what we are given, even more will be given. They will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into the outer darkness where he will be, where he will be in the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, this week we're finishing up this Money Talks series, and for the past two weeks we've been kind of diving into um, things about how we could use our money or what our money would say if it could talk. And so the first week we explored the idea that our money can add meaning to our lives, but it's not the meaning of life. And last weekend we talked about how our self-control with money determines who is in control of our finances and our lives. And so, this week, if our money could talk, it would say, when you lose track of your money, you lose track of your peace of mind. You know, statements like, it seems like I have enough, or we should be good, are pretty simple to avoid. But I'm willing to bet that more than likely you've said something like that, and I know that I have too, and when we say that more and more, we find ourselves anxious about having enough money. I know that I've, I've, I've said this before, but the, the truth is, is that our money is simple to keep up with, but it's hard to catch up with. And so today we're going to reflect on the a biblical reminder that we came across this week as we spend time talking about how you can have more peace of mind by tracking your money. And finally, we're going to end with a little bit of a challenge. Now, Pastor Andy Stanley points out that uh, an often overlooked passage of the scripture, but it's, it's important to kind of reiterate that there's a lot of talk about what the managers did with the money that was given to them, but there's no debates whose money they are working with. And that's because the managers all know that it's the landowner's money. They don't think for a minute that it's been a gift and that they only have to pay back a little bit when the owner comes back or only give back the original amount of funds, right? They know that they're stewards of all of the funds, 100% of it, that they have been entrusted with. They have to be faithful to. None of it's theirs. And so in this parable, the landowner is clearly God and we're the managers. God is willing to do the unexpected at times, to risk, to grow the kingdom, and make sure that there is a place for everyone. Remember, that third servant isn't chastised because he didn't risk it and lost it. It's that he did nothing with it. 
And so as stewards and managers of God's resources, we have been granted the authority to do the same thing. Not just bury the resources and talents that we've been entrusted with. We need to keep track of where it all goes so that we don't squander opportunity to make an impact for the kingdom, to do good. Now, if you're still checking this faith thing out and you're struggling with the idea of keeping accounts of everything, I wanna give you a few reasons why keeping track is probably a good idea, at least for your mental health and peace of mind, right? And I believe that our financial management training in this way is pretty similar to kind of physical training. And so to help illustrate this, I wanna kind of take you to, uh, you know, I guess a couple years back now, a track team that I was coaching at the time um, to illustrate some of these principles. Now, during the pandemic, COVID was, was a huge disruption to the track program. After 750 plus days though, we had finally gotten an opportunity back on the track, not just running, but competing against other teams in what was the only meet at, the, at that year, really, um, the county championship. And the first race was the four by 800 meter relay. So two laps around the track, four guys do that same thing. It's great. It's a four person relay team and, and each person runs around the track twice and they hand off and everything else. Now, our boys won the race because each member knew exactly what they needed to do and how they needed to do it. And they took first place. And this wasn't a fluke though. This group of four didn't just decide that day to pick up a baton and run when the gun went off. Months before, months before the day that they needed it, during the first few practices, the head coach did one really important thing. He collected some baseline data to get an idea about the skills and the ability of the team. And not necessarily just the fastest guys, but the ones that could work best together. And, you know, it would do little good to develop a training plan without knowing where a baseline fitness level of these guys was. And so the same is true with our finances. A budget is a good framework, but it's not helpful if we don't know our baseline. Rather than plugging in a budget that seems to be a one size fits all, establishing a baseline is going to help tailor your spending to meet the needs of your dreams, to right size your life. See, that's so you can live into your God-sized future. And so first, we track everything to establish a baseline. We track it all to make sure that we know where our money is going right now. And after establishing that baseline, we want to make sure that we keep doing that. So if there's a blip in the radar or, or if there's a place that, that we need to cut back or cut down on, we know when, when things get tough, we can move around. Or if our employment changes because of a, a global pandemic, whatever it is, tracking our spending allows these dynamic changes to happen in the way that we continue to go on. Going back to our, our imagery, right? Like fine tuning those growing edges when we continued after that baseline is like making sure that we have the right pacing as individuals or handoff as a team so that the teamwork results in us running our best race. And so finally, tracking our expenses allows us to be generous and feel good about it, to be proud of what we're doing as we partner with God and being good stewards. You know, God has enough money, but what God wants is transformed lives. And so when we know that we have a little extra or we have more margin, we're able to invest in things that are outside of ourselves. This might include church, but also other organizations that you believe in because they've touched your heart in some way. It could also be taking a friend to lunch and paying for it as they navigate a tough time or covering the cost of a uniform for a kid in the community. It's easy to see why we should keep track, but it might seem daunting. Right? That's sometimes the biggest hurdle is just to start or to try to have some kind of you know, system in place. But remember, keep it simple. One way to do this is just keep a sheet of graph paper or even a note in your, your phone's app and just create a column for each area that you're spending and record each transaction in the corresponding area. Like if you get a new car or a, you know, a new expense area comes up, add a column. Or there's a great app called YNAB, You Need a Budget. And one of the perks of, of tracking this here is that there's times that, that you know, when we know we need to track everything, you're not gonna purchase something because you just don't wanna take the 10 seconds to log it. But at least that is for me, right? I'm on Amazon, I wanna hit the buy button, but I don't because I just don't want to account for it. And so this likely means that it wasn't a need in the first place. Even the practice of logging things can help save money. And so these are two simple ways to kind of help keep track. And hopefully it'll slow you down a bit so that you know where your money has gone. And so now it's time for the challenge. 
For the next two months, keep track of all of your expenses and let me know if you're doing that, taking that challenge and I'll check in on you from time to time. But my hope is that you begin to transform your relationship with money because if, you, if our money could talk, it would tell us, if you lose track of me, you lose your peace of mind. Amen.